Low bearing rock column and pillar reinforcing without a permanent visual change is an important advantage cared for applications in both historical and modern sites. One of the most widely seen column reinforcement methods is using steel colors, which can cause a visual change on rock surfaces because of its corrosion problem and hardness. Steel colors are mostly used to reinforce rock columns with regular cross-section shapes and not suitable for being used to reinforce rock columns with irregular cross-section shapes because of their high stiffness preventing to be shaped by the column body. Rock column reinforcement method can be divided into two groups as active and passive reinforcement methods. In passive reinforcement method, confinement pressure is supplied as a reaction to deformation of rock surface contacting with the reinforcing devices. On the other hand, active reinforcement pressure can increase the load being capacity of with the uh, rock column or pillars without the deformation of uh, rock surface. In this study, active confinement pressure due to cooling of heated polymeric ties were investigated whether the polymeric materials are convenient to be used as a reinforcing material for load bearing rock columns or not. Other reasons for testing a polymeric material were the advantages of having soft surface, capability of being shaped by irregular cross sections, chemical resistance to eliminate the visual change on rock surface being colored as a result of chemical reaction to water. Polymers can be divided into two groups as thermoplastics and thermosets according to their reaction to being heated. Thermosets can be softened and extended easily by heating. Generally, their, polymeriz uh, their polymerization process transforms the liquid components into a plastic or rubber by cross-linking. Thermosets are not able to remold it by heating after their initial forming. Therefore, thermosets are generally polymerized in molds. In case of heating with high temperatures, Crosslinks of thermosets are broken without melting. On the other hand, thermoplastics, also called as thermosoftening plastics, can be deformed easily and shaped by heating. Thermoplastics harden and strengthen by cooling, which can have original lengths and shape after cooling from a temperature level depending on the type of product. Therefore, use of thermoplastics should be considered for the aim of active reinforcement pressure applying on rock columns encircled with heated ties. Polymer materials are used for different reasons varying within a ra large range. An important percentage of polymer usage is because of their good chemical resistivity as in applications of packing food transporting of drinking water, hot water or gases. Polymer materials used considering their strength values are generally engineering polymers which have better mechanical properties in comparison with most of the other polymeric materials. Also, chemical resistance of engineering polymers is an important is another important reason making them convenient to be used as alternative of conventional engineering materials. Polymeric materials are also advantageous because of their lower heating capacity than those of the conventional engineering materials such as steel and concrete, making elongation the shortening easy with the change of heat. 
to prevent failure of polymeric ties. When cooled and stressed around periphery of rock columns, engineering, engineering polymers are convenient to be used instead of the other types with low strengths. In this study, an inexpensive and one of the most widely used engineering polymers, polyamide 66 type of thermoplastic material was tested. Polymer, uh, polyamide 66 is also called as nylon 66. Ties with length of 55 cm, width of 9 mm and thickness of 2.3 mm were heated in store to investigate the reinforcement pressure supplied by cooling from different temperatures of 100 centigrade degree, 150 centigrade degree and 200 centigrade degree. Typical data for uh, some properties of polyamide 66 under the temperature of 25 uh, centigrade degree is now seen on a uh, screen now. Two different tests of peripheral and diametral compression were applied using load ring with diameter of 20 cm to measure confinement pressure supplied due to cooling of the heated ties. In peripheral and diametral compression tests, heated ties were respectively encircled around periphery and through the diameter of the load ring fitted a dial gauge. Plastic ties used in the study has a reached size containing slots and a locking mechanism that fits into the slots, making the strap to be able to move only one way and lock to back as one end of the plastic tie is run through the other end with locking mechanism. Uh, because the load ring periphery was longer than length of one tie, uh, two ties were linked each other by locking one's end with the other tie's end. It was practical to apply a heated polymer tie in a couple of seconds. After encircling and locking the ties, pressure change with the time was determined by deal gauge readings. Limestone and tooth type of rock blocks and cylindrical specimens of a concrete mix were reinforced using the ties and tested to investigate whether the heated polyamide ties are usable to increase the load bearing capacity. Cylindrical concrete specimens were prepared in laboratory. Totally, 10 specimens having 450 kilograms per cubic meter uh, SEM2 type Portland cement, 1000 in 575 kg per cubic meter aggregate and 225 cubic meter per uh, sorry 225 kg per kilograms per cubic meter water were casted into the cylindrical molds with the diameter of 0 0.15 meter and the height of 0 0.30 meter and uh, maximum particle size of aggregates was 16 mm in mix and more than 50% of aggregates were smaller than 4 mm. Yeah. And the mix was casted in three steps and air was removed with the tamping rods after each casting steps. Fresh concrete specimens were also put on the vibration table to remove air and increase the homogeneity. After 24 hours following the casting into the molds, the specimens were put into a temperature controlled cabin at 25 centigrade degree and cured for 28 days before tests. Six ties were used to reinforce a concrete blocks at intervals of 5 centimeters. 
the size of limestone and tooth blocks used in experiments was 0.35 meters, 0.25 meters and 0.15 meters. Tooth blocks cut with the size of 0.25 meters, 0.25 meters and 0.15 meters were also used in tests. Totally 6 limestone blocks, 8 tooth blocks were tested in the experimental study. 7 ties uh, were applied to reinforce a specimen of limestone blocks and tooth blocks with height of 0.25 meters. On the other hand, 10 ties were preferred to apply for reinforcement of a tooth block with the height of 0.35 meters. Ties heated in stow at 170 centigrade degree were used to reinforce both concrete and rock blocks, paying attention to ties to be applied with regular intervals on the block reinforced. Because of the decrease in temperature uh, of stove due to opening the stove to take the heated ties, the temperature was weighted to reach 170 centigrade degree again for taking another heated tie from the stove. Reinforcement application of a block was started at least half hour after the end of re reinforcing another block to keep ties well heated in the stove. It should be noted that an extra confinement pressure on specimens reinforced was resulted from tensioning the heated ties by hand to fasten them tightly in addition to the pressure applied due to the cooling. A day after applying the reinforcement ties, comparison tests were performed to compare reinforced with unreinforced specimens under the static load with the rate of 2 kN per second for both concrete and uh, rock blocks. Compression tests were applied to measure the peak loads for the failure of specimens and post-peak loads of failed specimens. The loading equipment automatically stopped loading when the peak load reduced by 10%. Additionally, some ties were, some ties were uh, tested to r measure their change in length because of heating to different temperatures of 100 centigrade degree, 150 centigrade degree and 200 centigrade degree. It should be noted here uh, that uh, 250 centigrade degree temperature was also applied to some of ties but the chemical weathering was detected seeing the change in color and smelling poisonous gases during heating. Therefore, the elongation test of heating with 250 centigrade degree could not be carried out. The change in length was measured marking the first and last lengths of the ties put on a table having a reference line uh, drawn to be uh, put one end of the ties. Four hours were waited to determine the change in length of the ties, although one hour was found to be enough when tested to establish a procedure. But uh, to be sure, the four hours were waited to determine the change in length of the heated ties. The elongation and the strain data obtained uh, from the change in length tests is now shown on screen. And uh, load changing with the time of cooling measurements from the loadering tests of peripheral and uh, diametral encircling are uh, now given on screen.
Time controlled load ring tests showed that polyamid tires can supply a rapid confinement pressure due to their fast cooling resulted from their low heat capacities. On the other hand, it is suggested to heat tires increasing the temperature step by step with a slow heating process to not affect the polymeric structure and bonds. The results of heating installed at 250 centigrade degree confirmed that the polymeric ties cannot have their lengths they have before heating process and lose their strength and ductility uh, because of the degradation um, which is resulted from heating to excessive temperatures. The last tie specimen tested using the load ring was not removed for three months to investigate the change in confinement pressure due to the stress relaxation effect. The decrease in the confinement load of peripherally applied polyamide tie was weakly read and uh, the data given on screen was collected. Many of the plastic ties were remaining on the failed blocks and able to supply confinement pressure even after the post-peak load test of reinforced blocks. The reinforced blocks failed with narrow cracks and were not scattered after being exposed to their peak and post-peak loads whereas the unreinforced specimens were shattered after the post-peak tests as shown on screen now. When the post-peak load test specimens with polyamide ties were loaded, a high tensile strain of plastic ties and the formation of crack surfaces until the failure of the ties could be obviously seen by naked eye. Therefore, the polyamide ties were found to significantly change the deformation characteristics and increase the ductility of specimens used in post-peak load tests. It should be noted that most of the failures of plastic ties were seen to be at locking parts of the ties. An important advantage of polyamide tie reinforcement usage was seen to be in crack shapes of blocks which were indistinct after the first peak load tests. Because the ties can hold the broken parts and prevent fall of crack pieces of failed blocks, it has an other advantage making minimum visual change happen to apply some further crack reinforcement methods of injection by using some, adhesive, some, adhesive, uh, some adhesives and curing materials. However, it should be noted that detention ties can cause a visual change result from the plastic deformation at the corners of the rectangular cross-section of soft rocks as observed from the tooth blocks tested in the study and as shown on screen now. Substantial confinement pressure measured from the load ring tests indicated that a desirable reinforcement can be supplied using the heated ties. Depending on the thickness and uh, width of the polyamide ties. The load bearing capacities of the reinforced blocks were found to be higher than those of the unreinforced blocks of both rock and concrete specimens. Especially rock blocks and concrete blocks used in post-peak load tests exhibited 
required better strength value use and higher deformation limits in comparison with the unreinforced blocks. The polyamide ties were able to supply a significant load bearing capacity of crank of cracked rock bodies and carry load until being broken. Polyamide ties can reinforce the blocks by applying active confinement, confinement pressure due to cooling and passive support because of their reaction to deformation of blocks. Because the reinforced rock and concrete blocks have higher strength and deformation limit under static loads, the blocks reinforced with heated ties are estimated to have a better performance against the dynamic loads than that of the unreinforced blocks. Polyamide 66 ties can be economically used to reinforce the rock and concrete columns. 100 polyamide ties used in the study can be purchased with the price of 20 US dollars. As seen from the cooling test results indicating 90% change of the confining pressure to be in first 3 minutes of cooling, a time loss after taking the ties from the heater can cause an important effect on the reinforcement efficiency. One of the most important advantages of the heated plastic ties is being useful to reinforce the columns without the regular shape of cross-section. On the other hand, a significant confinement pressure decrease resulted from the stress relaxation problem was realized to be an important disadvantage of the polyamide ties. The decrease in confinement pressure due to the stress relaxation problem was one, was one degrees with an increase in the time lapsing after the application of heated ties. The 50% of the stress relaxation completed within the first week of the test conf confirmed that stress relaxation tendency decreases with an increase in time. Stress relaxation is practically accepted, ex exact, uh, uh, accepted to stop after a time varying in accordance with the type of polymer, strain and initial stress to make polyamide tire reinforcement efficiency better in terms of supplying higher confinement pressure and minimizing the problems which can be resulted from the stress relaxation, further investigations for the possible use of heated polymeric ties with higher thickness and width than those of the ties used in the study are recommended. In addition to the polyamide 66 type polymer material, the method of reinforcement with heated polymeric ties can be assessed in comparison with other engineering thermoplastics which may have even better effect on the load bearing capacity of the reinforced rock and concrete blocks. Thank you for watching this presentation and I would like to thank International Society for Rock Mechanics Commission on Preservation of Ancient Sites to give me an opportunity to make this online presentation. Please send me your questions and comments.